Hey YouTube, thanks for clicking. Welcome to this tutorial on how to make the planet Venus in After Effects. Actually, that should probably be Recreate because, as you know, this video isn't 4 billion years long, even if it will feel like it is by the end. For those of you who've seen the earlier videos, Making Mercury and Making the Sun, you'll know by now that I'm going to use Video Copilot's free Orb plugin. If you can't use Orb for some reason, then check out the Making Mercury video which covers how to use CC Sphere to get pretty much the same result. What I'm going to cover in this tutorial isn't going to be about taking a texture map of Venus and slapping it on a sphere. Instead I'm going to use the native tools in After Effects to create procedural clouds. These techniques come close to replicating the look of Venus from the Akatsuki mission, which took all sorts of amazing shots in 2017. I'll end up exaggerating the colours a bit, but mainly to identify how I get that final look. Of course, if you're only ever going to replicate Venus, then you may as well slap on a texture map. There's a lovely one in Divine Art, which I use for reference at times. However, if you're interested in learning new things, then get settled in, as there's a lot to cover. As always, nothing I'm going to show you requires you spend extra money, and when needed, I'll point out alternatives if you're using older versions or your computer can't cope. So that said, let's jump in. First off, we need a composition. I'm doing this at 1920 by 1080 with 24 frames a second. It's set to 30 seconds for duration, but sometimes it's safer to give yourself 5 minutes. You'll probably never need that much, but it doesn't really hurt. Now I'll create a new solid. So that's layer, new solid. Make it comp size and hit OK. This is going to be my first cloud texture and I'm going to use a cute new feature of After Effects CC. Normally I'd look to add fractal noise here and use that, but because I'm wrapping it around a sphere, I can go one better. Go to Effect, Immersive Video, VR Fractal Noise. And now I get a spherical noise layer. VR Fractal doesn't have as many settings as regular fractal noise, but all the seams are taken care of for me. If your graphics card can't use the VR effects, then Andrew Kramer has a seamless sphere tutorial and downloadable comp, link in the description below. In the VR settings, I'm going to drop the complexity down to 4. In the transform, I'll reduce the scale to 3. In subscale, I'll increase the influence to 75 and decrease the scaling to 40. Confession time, this is all through me playing. This recipe is what I've come up with, and feel free to mess with it. Let me know in the comments if you have a better approach. I'm also going to add an expression to the evolution so that the clouds animate over time. Alt click on the evolution stopwatch and type time times 100. If you want the movement to go faster or slower, you just alter the number you're multiplying by. Now I'm going to add a tint to alter the color. Effects, color correction, tint. And here I use one of the Akatsuki photos to get a colour for the base clouds. Just drag in a photo and use the eyedropper. Finally for this layer, I'm going to add a turbulent displace to create some bigger movement. Go to Effect, Distort, Turbulent Displace. Up the amount to 170 and let's set an expression for the evolution. So alt click on that again and time times 10. Now, I think we still need more detail. So I'm going to pre-comp this layer and add additional layers to it. Make sure the layer is selected and then go to layer pre-compose. I've named my comp lower clouds and make sure all the attributes were moved over to Double click to open the new comp and duplicate the layer, which is Edit Duplicate. Delete the tint and turbulent displace from this layer. In VR Fractal Noise, change the transform scale to 1. Set the layer mode to Multiply and reduce the opacity to 30%. This should give us a lot of nice detail, but retain the bigger shapes from the clouds on the first layer. Finally for the pre-comp, when you look at those Akatsuki photos, it's like there's a band of orangeness covering the equator. I like this, it adds additional detail, and if I decide I want to make an alien cloud covered world, more detail helps sell the look a bit more. So let's create a new solid. I'm going to make this one white. I'll be using the tint effect to adjust the colouring. I'll set the transfer mode to multiply again. And now I'll use a mask to isolate the middle of the layer. 
Make sure you extend well beyond the frame on both sides, as next I'm going to feather the mask quite a bit, to about 200. And there we go. This is the first layer of clouds. Back in the Venus comp, I can create a new solid. Hit enter and rename it Orb Lower Clouds. Then go to Effect, Video Copilot, VC Orb, and drag that on. I'll set the radius to 400. In the material options, I'll set the specular down to zero. In the illumination options, the Fresnel to 1, the Shadow Light to minus 1, and the Shadow Light Contrast to 5.5. Expand the advanced options and set the edge feather to 0.2. This is cloud cover after all, it should be soft. In maps, set the diffuse to our new pre-comped lower clouds, and make sure to turn off the pre comp layer. There, quick preview, and you can see we're getting all sorts of cool movement going on. Next, we're going to tackle the upper clouds, and this is where I played around a lot. Ultimately, the feature is nice, but it's frustratingly undetailed, and I had to fake some of it more than I'd like. Still, it adds something extra which helps sell the shot, so here it is. I'm going to create a new solid, layer, new solid, and then I'm going to add to it regular fractal noise. Effect, noise and grain, fractal noise. Set the noise type to turbulent sharp, invert the effect, and increase the contrast to 125 and decrease the brightness to minus 15. Set overflow to clip. In transform, uncheck uniform scaling and increase the height to 500. Now alt click on the offset stopwatch and add the following expression. Square brackets, time times eight, comma zero, end square brackets. This will slowly move the noise in the X direction, but keep it locked on the Y axis. Reduce the complexity to 3. And let's expressionate the evolution again. Alt click and type time times 20. Now we'll add a wave warp. So let's go to effect, distort, wave warp. Set the height to 50, the width to 100. Pin all the edges and reduce the speed to 0.5. and let's expressionate the phase. So I'll click on that and time times 100. It just keeps everything moving along. By the way, what do you think of expressionate as a term? Should it be expressionized? Yeah. So it's probably looking a bit weird so far. I'm also gonna do a skewing thing in a bit to replicate the positioning of the clouds. And I only want to show the top here. To do that, I'll add a linear wipe, which is effect transition linear wipe. Set the completion to 62% and the angle to zero and ramp the feather right up to 150. Now for that skewing. I tried everything in After Effects and settled on CC smear, which is effect distort CC smear. You'll need to play around with this until you're happy, but these are my settings. Set the from coordinates to 1700 by 540 and the two coordinates to 630 by 450 and increase the radius to 500. If I check the transparency, you can see we have the black visible, but I don't want to use a transfer mode so I, because I want these clouds to appear dark. So I'm going to use an extract effect, which is effect keying extract. I'll set the black point to 233 and the black softness to the same. Now, it's a little too smooth. There's no sense of scale at the moment. I'm gonna, this is where I'm faking it a bit. I'm gonna go to effect, stylize, roughen edges. And I'll change the type to spiky and the border to zero. The edge sharpness to 10 and drop the scale to 10 also. And the complexity to five. So now you see we're getting a bit of detail going on. Let's add some colour too. 
and instead of using tint, I'm going to use effect, color correction, tritone. This gives me a little more control, even though for this I'm going to go back to the picture and I'm just picking shades of blue. Finally for this effect, I'm going to tackle the smoothness, and to do that I'm going to go to Effect, Distort, Turbulent, Displace. I went with the amount at 70 and the size 20. I'm not done yet though, we now need to pre-compose this layer, so layer, pre-compose and move all the attributes, and call the comp something like Upper Clouds. and then go onto the pre-comp and duplicate the layer. And remember that's edit, duplicate. This is gonna be our southern hemisphere clouds. So first let's alter the fractal noise evolution, change the expression to time times 10. It just breaks up any symmetry. Now go to the linear wipe and set the completion to be a bit more, about 70% and enter 180 in the direction. So now we see the bottom half. I want the northern clouds more prominent so in CC Sphere on this layer, adjust from to 1700 by 670 and the 2 to 660 by 630. Everything else can remain the same. This doesn't deal with the poles though, and for that we need a continuous band of cloud. So layer, new solid, and make it grey as white might cause problems with the tritone we'll be adding later. Using the rectangular mask, mask out the centre, almost as if you were creating letterboxes. Feather the mask to about 130 and set the drop down to subtract. Now, to give it a similar sense of scale to the strands in the clouds, we could add another rough and edges, but a quick shortcut is view the effects on one of the other cloud layers, select the layer, tap E, then highlight the rough and edges and tritone effects by holding down shift and clicking on them. Then go to edit, copy, or just hold down control and hit C. And then go to your poles layer and hit control V or edit and paste. You might need to adjust the colors and maybe replace tritone with tint if you can't get the pole clouds to match with the tendrils. And when you're happy, let's jump back to our main comp. Duplicate the layer orb lower clouds and hit enter to rename it Orb Upper Clouds. Increase the radius to 404 and in map set the diffuse option to our new Upper Clouds precomp. Okay, almost done. We just need to add an atmosphere layer to help blend in the colors and help sell that overall look. So let's duplicate orb upper clouds. Hit enter and rename it atmosphere. Working from the top down, set the diffuse to zero. Set the illumination to 2.4. In the illumination options, set the Fresnel bias to 2.6 and the shadow light to 1. The shadow light contrast to 1.4 and the expansion to 0. Now let's add a glow, which is effect stylize glow. Increase the radius to 25 and drop the intensity to 0.3. And then effect color correction curves. And just grab the middle and, and drag it over a bit. Finally set the layers transfer mode to screen. 
Now, by the time we add a parallel sunlight, stars and camera move, we're done. If you're not happy with the cloud cover at the poles, just increase or decrease the mask expansion. Same goes for the band of orange on the lower clouds. And of course, you can adjust the speed of the cloud movements and the tendrils by altering the expressions on the evolution. Hopefully I've helped you discover some aspect of After Effects you didn't know about. As always, if you have a comment or suggestion, please just let me know below. Feel free to share and obviously subscription counts help toward me justifying putting the work in. Next time, Earth. But there's no point doing Earth as there's loads of great tutorials out there. So instead, I'm going to do three mini tutorials. We'll look at adding a storm, adding an aurora and adding 3D labels. But for now, I'll just say thanks for watching.